next motor with constant load variable excitation. So, in previous slide we discussed, so this slide you can see the behavior of synchronous motor with varying variable load, okay. So, in synchronous motor two cases, either you can vary the load or you can vary the excitation. So, while varying the load what will happen? Uh, current will increase, okay. So, by increasing the load current will increase. In second case, so this is important. So, here we are maintaining load is constant, we are varying the excitation, okay. In synchronous motor you have the stator, okay. Then rotor, we have the rotor like this. So, rotor we have the field winding. So, we are varying the field current, excitation. Excitation means you are varying the field current, okay. So, your excitation, yeah, you are varying the field current. Now, in this slide, we are going to discuss how the motor, synchronous motor will behave if uh, if we vary the excitation by keeping the load constant, V phase vector, assume the load is some uh, 50 percentage of load, for example, I am saying 50 percentage of load. So, zero load means, so what is the vector? So, this is uh, V phase, if load is zero means EB phase, EB phase is EB phase, EB phase uh, exact opposition that is delta equal to zero, okay, no load condition. But here, uh, in this explanation, we assume that the uh, load is 50 percent load. So, definitely there is a some delta. So, that load, that 50 percent load will create some delta. So, this is the delta. So, this is called EB phase. So, V phase, this is EB phase. Now, this is the uh, uh, excitation is varying, okay. So, now V phase, now assume the excitation is less. If excitation is less, that is field current, field current is less, what happens? Flux will be less. If flux is less, EB phase is less. You know the formula, EB phase formula. So, EB phase equal to 4.44 KC KD phi F T phase. So, phi and EB phase is directly proportional. So, if excitation is less, the EB magnitude is less. This is the EB magnitude, okay. So, more excitation, more uh, EB phase. The magnitude of EB phase will be more here you can see. So, here first case we assume the excitation is less. So, the EB phase magnitude is less. So, what is the current IA? IA? So, you know the formula that is IA equal to V phase minus EB phase divided by ZS. So, if you want to derive IA current, you have to subtract the EB phase from the V phase vector. So, this is the EB phase vector. This creates some angle delta. Okay. So, V phase minus EB phase. So, here the EB phase, this is the EB phase, the EB phase magnitude is less EB phase. So, the delta at the same angle you have to draw EB phase, okay, with, the, uh, with the refer to V phase. So, what is this? This is the resultant. What is the resultant? Resultant is the IA ZS, that is a formula you know, okay. So, V phase equal to EB phase plus IA ZS. So, V phase minus EB phase is nothing but IA ZS. So, this vector represents IA ZS. Now, I am increasing the uh, EB phase that is by increasing the excitation. So, that is V phase, this is case 1, this is case 1. Now, we can discuss the case 2, okay. So, case 2, so V phase, I am increasing the EB phase. So, more compared to V phase, more. So, EB phase. So, load is constant. So, delta is constant. So, this is second case. First case, in both the case delta is constant. Why delta is constant? Because here we assume constant load and variable excitation. So, excitation here less, here more excitation. So, now what will happen? So, V, v phase minus EB phase, minus EB phase. So, this is the delta. So, this is nothing but IA ZS, IA ZS. This is one case. case. In third case, you can have the V phase, okay. So, some EB phase, critical excitation case. So, EB phase. So, V phase minus EB phase, okay. So, here we have some uh, IAZS, case 3. So, what is the inference from case 1 and case 2 and case 3? In case 1, the EB phase, EB phase is less, okay, excitation, under excitation. So, EB phase is less. Why EB phase is less? Because flux is less. So, flux is less means IF is less. Why IF is uh, flux is less? Because IF is less. If flux less means under excitation. In under excitation, 
E B phase is less. So, but I A Z S magnitude is more. I A Z S magnitude is more. So, I A Z S is uh, equivalent to I A in I A Z S that is equal to I A like because constant I Z S is constant. So, the I A ma magnitude is more. So, in under excitation the machine takes more current. Similarly, in second case what we assumed over excitation because the excitation is more ok. So, higher excitation if excitation is more that is over excitation over excitation case E B magnitude is more compared to V phase in this case also the I A magnitude is more. But in third case what we assumed critical excitation or normal excitation we can say normal excitation what happens the current magnitude is less ok. So, by this way here you can infer that uh, in synchronous motor you can operate in different uh, excitation condition ok. So, either you can operate at uh, under excitation condition or over excitation condition or uh, normal excitation condition. If you operate the synchronous motor in under excitation condition the motor takes more current you know under excitation means what, what it means under ex excitation means less flux ok less flux that will produce less back EMF compared to V phase. So, in under excitation condition the motor takes <coughs> more uh, current similarly in over excitation condition also the motor takes more condition, but in normal excitation condition the motor takes minimum current compared to under excitation and uh, over excitation. So, now in this slide you can see this is the important uh, point. So, V curve and uh, inverted V curve this is the unique feature of the synchronous motor in synchronous motor is capable of operating in uh, in different power factor. So, either you can operate in the lagging power factor condition uh, or leading power factor condition or unity power factor condition this is the unique feature of the synchronous motor. So, no other motor operates like this ok. So, now here <coughs> the same uh, uh, topic. So, in different way I am putting. So, the motor with constant load variable excitation ok. So, under excitation means here this is the V phase. So, this magnitude is more V phase in under excitation uh, E B phase E B phase is less compared to V phase. So, this is the idea ok. So, this is less. So, the current uh, so V phase minus E B phase this is nothing but uh, E R that is I A Z S E R is nothing but resultant uh, voltage that is nothing but I A Z S ok. So, the angle between resultant voltage and I A angle between resultant voltage and I A is always 90 degree because tan theta in any uh, triangle power triangle the tan theta equal to x s divided by R A. So, in synchronous motor or in synchronous machine in general the armature resistance value is very very less compared to x s R A is negligible. So, the theta is almost 90 closer to 90 85 to 90 it will get. So, that means the angle between E R and I A is 90 degree. So, here the angle is the angle between supply voltage and current I 1 is the current drawn by the motor the angle between V phase and I is phi. So, that the current is lagging ok lagging. So, that means in under excited condition the motor will operate in the lagging power factor lagging power factor. So, this you have to uh, uh, understand. So, first thing you have to draw the V phase vector ok V phase vector here the excitation is under excitation. So, the magnitude ok the magnitude of E B phase is less ok. So, this is the lesser magnitude. So, if you want to uh, calculate I A Z S you have to subtract E B phase from the V phase. So, V phase minus E B phase equal to I A Z S I A Z S. So, from I A Z S the location uh, I A location you have to identify normally that is after 90 degree ok the angle between this E R voltage and current is 90 degree ok. So, this is 90 degree. So, this is the location of current. So, now with this location uh, current location you can uh, calculate the power factor. So, by uh, angle between the supply voltage and current. So, that is lagging. So, similarly in over excited condition third case you can see over excited condition. So, this is the V phase. So, this is the E B phase. So, this is the uh, x axis this is the delta here in the full explanation we assumed delta is constant. So, E B phase. So, in over excited condition 
the E B phase value is greater than V phase ok under excitation less here greater than V phase. So, if you want to calculate the E R ok I A Z S. So, V phase minus E B phase correct E B phase. So, this is will give resultant voltage that is nothing but I A Z S. The angle between I A Z S and I A is 90 degree. So, this is I A after 90 degree you can draw. So, 90. Now, you can calculate the angle between voltage and current. So, here the current leads the voltage by some angle phi. So, the motor will operate in the leading power factor. So, leading power factor condition. In normal uh, excitation, you have to adjust the uh, back EM of magnitude. So, that you can get the unity power factor. So, by adjusting this back EM of, so from the first two explanation you can see uh, this magnitude, back EM of magnitude decides the power factor. Magnitude of the back EM of decides the power factor of the motor. Okay. So, magnitude of the back EMF is depends on the excitation. So, by adjusting the excitation, you can control the back EMF. So, by adjusting this magnitude, this magnitude, you can uh, make this current in phase with the V phase. So, that particular excitation is called normal excitation. So, the synchronous motor capable of operating in under excitation, over excitation and normal excitation. Now, you can draw the graph between IS that is supply current. Okay, supply current means current drawn by the motor input current then field IF, IF graph between supply current and IF gives V curve. So, this looks like English letter V that is why this is called V curve. So, at one point of time you can take this graph second graph at one point of time the motor takes minimum current at one excitation the motor takes minimum current. So, this is the unity power factor condition. So, this region is called under excitation this is called over excitation. If you increase if the motor is operated in the over excited condition the current run by the motor increases. Similarly, in under excitation the current run drawn by the motor increases at one point at one point the motor takes minimum current ok. So, that point is called the normal excited condition. Similarly, you can draw the graph between power factor and IF field excitation. So, that is inverted V curve ok. So, if uh, at normal excited condition, normal excited condition the power factor will be 1 that is maximum ok. So, in under excited condition the power factor is less then over excited condition also the power factor is less ok. So, th this will give inverted V curve.